Hello students. In this video, we're going to compute the rank and nullity of a matrix. Now, I don't have this in the context of linear systems, and uh, I'm not going to relate the nullity necessarily to something called the null space of the matrix. Uh, I'm just simply going to show you how to compute the rank and the nullity, and I will just, in this video, accept the definitions in the context of this example. So this is more of an algorithmic example as to how to get the matrix down to RREF and then recognize what is the rank of the matrix and what is the nullity of the matrix. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, of course, is um, given this matrix, we're going to perform elementary row operations and get this matrix down to row reduced echelon form, RREF. So I'm going to pick the upper left one there to be the pivot, and then I'm gonna perform the following row operation. So I'm just gonna add row one plus row two and replace row two, and then add row one plus row three and replace row three. And when I do that, I get the following matrix. So we've completely eliminated uh, essentially the bottom row of the third, the, the third row, the bottom row, except you know we have a one here. So we know that that's gonna become a pivot in our next manipulation here. So it looks like it's almost in row reduced echelon form, except not quite, right? Um, it's, it's, in a, it's in an echelon form, but not row reduced echelon form. So I'm going to pick this one to be my next pivot, and I'm going to eliminate these two entries here by multiplying this multiplying row three by minus three and adding it to row two, then replacing row two. And then I'm gonna take row three and add it to row one and replace row one. So when I perform those operations, we get the following matrix. And then to finally get down to row reduced echelon form, I'm going to eliminate this minus three by adding three times row two plus row one. And when I do that, of course, we get a zero in this top entry here. Three times three is nine plus minus three is six. And so now we have a matrix that is in row reduced echelon form. So I'm just gonna rewrite that matrix. And I'm gonna circle the pivots and you see that we have one, two, three pivots. Remember that the rank of a matrix is the number of pivots when it's in RREF. Actually, we could have gone back here and just realized that we had three pivots up here as well. If it's an echelon form, that does, that does count. But to be rigorous and complete, I'm gonna bring it down to RREF. So the rank is three, and the nullity, uh, to compute the nullity, we have a theorem in linear algebra, and it's, the theorem goes something like this. The rank plus the nullity equals the number of columns. So we just count the columns, one, two, three, four, five columns, and we have rank as the number of pivots in RREF, so that's three. So now we just set up this simple little algebraic equation and we solve for the nullity and we see that the nullity is two. So rank plus nullity, rank is three, nullity is two, three plus two is five, five is the number of columns. Now you might be wondering what is the business with this rank and nullity, why is this important? That's coming up. There are some theoretical considerations that come into solving systems of equations that tell us when is a system solvable, when will we end up with a consistent system, when will the system be inconsistent, uh, when will we have an infinite number of solutions, and so on and so forth. Let me just point out that if you had a matrix like this and you had zero on the right-hand side, so imagine you have three zeros here, you just set up a, you know, an augmented matrix and you set up three zeros. Notice that if that were the case, it's these two columns that are gonna allow you to have non-zero answers that non-zero vectors that are going to allow you to multiply, you know, that you're gonna be able to multiply this matrix by those non-zero vectors and get the result to be a zero matrix. So for example, if I had the vector zero, zero, one, zero, zero, the zeros would cancel out the zero, zero would cancel out these first two columns. The last two zeros would cancel out this column, but the one that was in the middle would multiply here and you would still get zero. 
So that tells you something about the fact that you could have non-zero vectors multiply this matrix and still end up with zero on the right-hand side. And that's going to become important when we study the some of the theoretical aspects of solvability of systems. Um, and because you get zero as a result, we call that a null, right? That has to do with something called the null space of the matrix, and that's the nullity. So that's some foreshadowing of what's to come. Anyhow, this is how you compute the rank and nullity of a matrix. Get it down to RREF, then count up the number of columns, circle your pivots. You know pivots is rank, subtract rank from the number of columns, and you get nullity. All right, good luck.